Hello and welcome to another episode from Ken's Training. Today's training is going to be on why is my pneumatic thermostat constantly hissing? Uh, I'm in a conference room right now. Let me give you a little pan here so you can see. Now the conference room is currently empty. What happened was is that they were just getting ready to uh, start a, uh, a meeting here in the conference room and they uh, call me up and they say, hey, uh, Ken, my uh, the thermostat is just constantly hissing in this room. We're getting ready to start a meeting here. Can you come up and fix it? They say, well, you know, I, I already suspect, I think I know what's wrong. Now I'm going to take you through the troubleshooting steps on how to determine that. And I told the person calling, I said, hey, it's going to take me at least 20 minutes in order to make this repair. And the meeting's either just getting started or it's already underway and when you try to do work while you're in a conference room it's um, very obtrusive to the people trying to have a meeting so I said you know what let's just leave it alone let it hiss and I will come back uh, after the meeting and uh, take care of it when the room is empty so here we are here's the thermostat behind me let's go through the steps alright here's the thermostat I do not know if the camera is picking it up, but it's definitely constantly hissing. Okay, I'm going to try to show you every single step. Here we go. The first thing I'm going to do, take off the cover. This particular thermostat is a Siemens or Powers thermostat, and it's probably reverse acting as most of my thermostats are reverse acting. Now. I'm just taking the dial and I'm going from full heat to full cold. The, 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 the hissing sound does not matter. It's staying consistent. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the thermostat off of its mounting housing right there. Okay. Now the one on top is uh, the one on the bottom is supposed to be the supply. The one on the return, uh, the one on top is the branch going back to the actuator or velocity controller if you have it. This one is the supply feeding the supply of the thermostat. I'm going to just put my finger over that, and it is still hissing. So what's happening is is that the brake is on this tubing right here. So this. Uh, I'm going to open this up and take this apart right now. Okay, here we go. I have a, a flat bladed screwdriver. I'm going to loosen up the two screws that hold this plate in place. It loosens this up and if you turn it there's a couple of holes here in which you can pull that out. Now, you can see that the this is my ultimate problem here. Let me uh, give you a close-up of this so you can see it. Hold on. Okay. Hang on. Okay. This here is the, bre the tubing, that, the bracket that came off. This tubing here is all completely just brittle. It's just folding apart here. This is what needs to be replaced. Now you'll notice that this has a um, a spring inside of it. That way, if you try to when you when you fold it inside of the the the, uh, the area right here, what happens is is the spring prevents it from kinking kinking, kinking out. So that's how you uh, kind of keep that nice and solid. Uh, so what I'm basically going to have to do is just take this off and then put uh, replacement um, tubing on here in order. Alright, so what I've got is I've got this uh, package here, Siemens 192-505, and what that is inside of the uh, package here it comes with five of these right here, and basically this is for the supply and the branch circuit um, for um, this uh, this area here. Now, what I don't need is I don't need quite so much length and the way that they terminate it they terminate it which is the most common into a 5 16 or 5 30 seconds I think it is uh, uh, tubing 
but basically mine is a little bit different. Mine doesn't have that. The way they did this building is they terminated it in copper. So let me show you how I need to address this issue. Okay, so this is my area that I'm dealing with here. And what I need to do, hang on, just trying to get the camera just right. What I need to do first is I need to uh, take out, there's some clips in here which are holding, it's these clips right here like this, which is like a, um, hang on, the camera came out of focus. Okay. This clip here is what I just removed, which is uh, a, like a locking clip. So there's one for each of those two. So just using, again, my needle nose pliers, and I'm going to go ahead and pull out the second one. Okay, there it is. Now I'm just going to take and very gingerly pull off the rest of this uh, very brittle uh, plastic here. Plastic tubing. Okay, now there's two tubes here. One's on the left, one's on the right. First thing I need to do is I need to determine which is the supply and which is the branch going back. So you just take your finger, cap it. So it's obviously the one on the left is the supply which is going to go to the blue. So here's the blue right here. Hang on. Pan back a little bit. Right. So here's the blue right here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my needle nose pliers cut a section of this off like that now the spring is a little long so I'm just going to take the spring and I'm going to go ahead and cut that as well I don't need my spring to be quite so long then I'm going to take and put on the, uh, the lock nut here that I took off earlier I'm going to take and push that on first, then I'm going to put this one on the bottom, I mean the one on the left because that's the supply. On. Now this is a little tricky, you got to kind of wiggle it on. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my needle nose pliers try to fatten the, be the beginning opening up here so I can get that in. This spring still may be giving me a hard time. I'm just going to take a little bit more of that spring off as well. There we go. And now just gently trying to push that on. Of course once I do the, this one it's going to make a little bit of noise but you get an idea on how to do it, and then I'll do the other one off camera. All right, hold on. So hard, that's why they don't make these like this anymore. Because they made this one too hard. All right, here we go. I'm gonna push that on as best I can, then take the lock nut and push that on all the way, and then lock that physically right to it. Now you'll see when you cap that, it completely stops the airflow. So that's just a little loud right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the same thing, repeat the process for the branch circuit. Okay, now I've got these two hooked up. I need to put them on here. The blue goes on the bottom. The clear one goes on the top. Just like so. You want to kind of bend this so it doesn't make any sharp bends when you do it. Okay, there it is right there. Then just take a uh, flat bladed screwdriver and tighten that up. Okay. So when you put your finger over that, it's nice and quiet. That's the way it should be. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and put the thermostat on. I like to just 
wet that slightly so it slips on there a little bit easier. All right. Now that that's on, I can go ahead and test out the thermostat to see how well it's doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to full heat. And I can hear the air in the room shut off. Now I'm going to go to full cold. I can hear it bleeding off as it should. Everything's fine. Now, I've got a uh, tap gauge here. I can go ahead and put that in. And I can see at what pressure that comes up at. And let me make sure that you, the audience, can see that okay. And let's just see what happens here. Okay, so now I'm going to just go ahead and increase this. All right, now calibration on this is 5.5, because this one doesn't have a velocity controller and it's reverse acting. So let me just see. It's showing that the room temperature is about 71, and it actually matches the temperature right here, which says that the red says it's at 71. So this is perfectly in calibration. I'm just going to go ahead and set this to uh, 72 degrees which is a, about average for a conference room. Pull that off, like so. It's set properly. Now all I need to do is put this on. And, and lock it down. On this particular one, we even removed the tab to allow the, the uh, tenant to make an adjustment if they felt too hot or too cold. They could do that, at that uh, uh, without calling us in to take care of that. Conference rooms, you never know whether you're going to have just a couple people in it or a large uh, volume of people needing extra air. I just want to mention that there's uh, another situation in which the thermostat could be hissing and the tubing that's directly in back of the thermostat is, uh, could still be okay. That's not your problem. Um, this could just simply be the pneumatic actuator of the damper actuator motor that operates the, um, the damper uh, by the VAV box or it could be if it's an exterior zone and you have a hot water pneumatic hot water valve it could be the, the, uh, the actuator that operates that valve. The, the diaphragm could have a hole in it so when the thermostat is calling for heating if, or whatever it doesn't really matter uh, when, there's, when there's pressure on that system, it never gets satisfied, so it constantly bleeds out, and you'll, and you'll hear that back at the thermostat. Although it will not be as loud as the, the sound I experienced, because um, mine was right there, local to the thermostat. It was, it, it's a different type of a, of a bleed off. On the other situation, it's actually going through the thermostat and, and it's just constantly bleeding through the thermostat. So it still makes a sound, it's just not quite as loud. Those are the two scenarios in which you can come across in which, you know, why is my thermostat constantly hissing? Or I guess uh, the third scenario could be that the thermostat is simply failed and the thermostat needs to be replaced. Um, uh, I guess those would be the, the three items that you could possibly have to come across. But uh, to, in order to figure out which is the culprit, you have to go through troubleshooting uh, steps in order to figure that out. And then hopefully I gave you some good ideas on you know how to start taking it apart and try, trying to diagnose, okay, where is, where is this, uh, where's, where am I bleeding off from? What's going on? And then you should be able to track it down and find it. And that's it. That concludes these, this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope if you run into the same situation on why is my thermostat uh, hissing or making noise, you'll know how to take care of that. Basically, you need to just replace that tubing in back of the thermostat most of the time. Could be something else, but generally speaking, um, especially this particular building is 27 years old. I knew that the, uh, this is the, not the first one we've come across. We've come across many because it's just old, brittle cracking, and the life expectancy of that uh, clear tubing has, um, we've exceeded that life expectancy and needs replacement. That's all it is. 
And, uh, and that's it. Uh, if you have liked the video, please click on like. Check out my channel, Ken Training on YouTube. And I'll see you later.